twisting the truth is our current federal government's modus operandi. Look no further than White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki's latest political gymnastics when she claimed, so We've not been pro-lockdown. Uh, that has not been his agenda. Most of the lockdowns actually happened under the previous president. While technically true, most actual lockdowns happened in America under Trump, the reality is that Biden praised pro-lockdown governors like Andrew Cuomo of New York. In terms of his personal behavior or what he's done as a governor? What he's done as a governor. I thought he's done a hell of a job. Deified lockdown advocate Anthony Fauci as America's scientist and insisted throughout his 2020 campaign that lockdowns were necessary. Would you go the route that Bill Gates is recommending, which is essentially is, would you recommend to governors at, at every state to essentially lock for, down in order for, for a period for, of several weeks? For the time being, I would, yes, because here's the point, and you talked about it last night, Anderson. You don't know who doesn't have it. You don't know who doesn't have the virus. So a lot of people walking around looking like they're pretty healthy and they may very well have the virus and transmit it. So two weeks in what is going to be a long fight to deal with this is a small price to pay, especially since you can compensate people for the lost time now that in fact the legislation has been passed by the Congress. Let's while our government officials may struggle with cognitive dissonance, Americans are taking notice as their trust in the federal government continues to plummet. The Biden administration aside, the CDC's approach to the pandemic has been concerning, especially regarding its ability to offer reliable information to the public. The latest example of this trend occurs in a misleading infographic, which if taken at face value, conveys that wearing a cloth mask provides 56% more protection than no mask at all. The CDC cites the results from its new study on masking, which states that wearing a cloth mask was associated with lower adjusted odds of a positive test compared with never wearing a face covering, but was not statistically significant. If one looks closely at the infographic, the hash symbol at the bottom indicates the results for cloth masks are not statistically significant. Even though the CDC is technically honest in reporting this fact on the infographic, the situation still raises the question. If it admits in fine print that its infographic isn't backed by reliable evidence, then why are they publishing it in the first place? Moreover, if the evidence suggests that wearing cloth masks has no statistically significant relationship with reducing the probability of testing positive, then why does the CDC continue to say that we should use them? Right now, our CDC guidance has not changed. Um, we have and continue to recommend um, masking in areas of high and substantial transmission. That is essentially everywhere in the country in public indoor settings. We continue to recommend universal masking in our schools. Um, and so our guidance has not changed. Vinay Prasad, professor of epidemiology at the University of California, San Francisco, echoes this sentiment, scrutinizing the rigor of the study itself. According to Prasad, there are multiple issues with how the researchers conducted the survey, including significant response and selection bias. In a Cato working paper, Prasad, along with other researchers, highlights the main concern with broadcasting flawed research. Although weak evidence should not preclude precautionary actions in the face of unprecedented events such as the COVID-19 pandemic, ethical principles require that the strength of the evidence and best estimates of amount of benefit should be truthfully communicated to the public. Unfortunately, this behavior is typical for the CDC, which has debased itself to the level of partisan media outlets that spin the results of medical studies. Admitting that cloth masks don't reduce the odds of testing positive would disrupt its existing narrative and result in political uproar against the CDC from the public and other highly influential groups, such as the Biden administration and teachers' unions. Relenting on its stance will further erode the CDC's recommendation for universal masking in schools enraging teachers' unions, who we know influenced its school mask guidance. Despite the growing evidence against masks, the CDC is intent on maintaining its position on school masking. According to its official mission, the CDC serves as the national focus for developing and applying disease prevention and control, environmental health, and health promotion and health education activities designed to improve the health of the people of the United States. Since the beginning of the COVID era, there have been many cases in which the CDC stepped outside its mission. 
we must not forget the eviction moratorium. On September 4, 2020, the CDC, citing the need to control COVID, stopped landlords from evicting tenants. The data backing this argument was shoddy, and the moratorium was later deemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. In addition to controlling landlords, the CDC also ignores research that opposes its position on the robustness of natural immunity. According to famed John Hopkins researcher Marty McCary, the results of the latest data on reinfection rates demonstrated that natural immunity was 2.8 times as effective in preventing hospitalization and 3.3 to 4.7 times as effective in preventing COVID infection compared with vaccination. Yet the CDC spun the truth when reporting on this study. They claimed, Vaccination remains the safest strategy for averting future SARS-CoV-2 infections, hospitalizations, long-term sequelae, and death, based on a comparison between hybrid immunity, combination of prior infection and vaccination, with natural immunity. They did not clarify what the study's results actually show, that vaccination does not significantly reduce the risk of hospitalization for those with natural immunity. But why would they? These findings directly dispute the position held by the CDC and the Biden administration. The current CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, will not budge on her position either. In October of 2020, she signed the John Snow Memorandum, which still states there is no evidence for lasting protective immunity to SARS-CoV-2 following natural infection. The game is up. The American people can sense the lies. Their trust in the CDC is falling. Its lack of transparency damages public health in the long run, hindering its ability to provide effective messaging during future health emergencies. The CDC faces incentives that prompt it to follow the concentrated interests of special interest groups at the cost of providing reliable information to the public. If they want the trust of the American people, they have to work harder to regain it. Uh, face masks, these face masks, are the most important, powerful public health tool we have. And I will continue to appeal for all Americans, all individuals in our country, to embrace these face coverings. I've said it, if we did it for 6, 8, 10, 12 weeks, we'd bring this pandemic uh, under control. These actually, we have clear scientific evidence, they work, and they are our best defense. I might even go so far as to say that this face mask is more guaranteed to protect me against COVID than when I take a COVID vaccine. The CDC's actions have completely bewildered the American people. If it continues down this road, it will only erode what little credibility it has left. But stick around everybody, when we come back, I will ask the doctor about restoring public trust in the CDC.